walking and eating very important. <sighs> One thing that's really funny and one of the, uh, the differences between the pyramids in Giza and the pyramids here in Bosnia is in Giza we, we, we go to the concrete, to the limestone straight away but here we actually have more layers. The first layer is more the concrete of, of a stone structure and then the limestone comes underneath and um, yeah. I don't know why they did it, maybe we will find out. What better way to climb pyramids than just actually climb them? The energy completely shifts when you step down here. Completely, it just becomes like so. Everything was open, flowering up, intense back and forwards. But this, the second you step down here, it goes like boom, like silence, but a little bit pressure, and just pulls the energy together in in a sort of a capsule, cold capsule, not in a bad form, just extremely grounded. So, let's hope there's no snakes in here. What I really love about the Bosnian pyramids is it's the way that they are built, the way that they are lying layers on top of top of each other and and the mud layers, how soft material actually is on top of it and yet it is so strong and it's so grounding. <laughs> I, I know I am um, I, I have this special love for stones and stuff like this but it is truly amazing. Like look how powerful and strong this is. Look how how grounding it is and yet so sensitive. <laughs> Anyways, that is lying uh, on top of the we got the concrete. This is lying uh, next level and For thousands of years, it has just been been falling down, building up, hiding all this knowledge, protecting all this knowledge. We should be just grateful for its existence. Truly, truly grateful. This is the rope when we want to climb up. So here we still got the concrete layers. It was built on top of the of the pyramid, and for me, it really feels as if as if the concrete was created long after the actually pyramid. That they, they chose to build something upon it. This is quite funny. But yet, as as I've been feeling the other years, the, the energy and the Sun Pyramid is just so much more at ease, so much more at peace than at the other pyramids. Um, like he's, he's resting, he's sending out his energy and, and he's okay where he's standing. <laughs> of course there's yet a lot to discover within this, but as he's standing in his pure form, he's, he's doing his purpose. And a wish and a goal is, is really just to reconnect the pyramids, reconnect the energies so they can join forces into oneness. As everything is about love and harmony, 
construction of these creature was the same. Is the same. I feel as if the concrete have protecting uh, the pyramid itself because the pyramid was built in a time of of purity and time of love. If I feel into the underlying layers, the, the whole construction and the way it was created was out of forces that, let's call it not man-made, it's things that we we don't know how to do or produce anymore. The the construction inside of the stones <coughs> is is combined in a, in a certain form that we don't know how to put it together unless we can do it energetically. But the concrete the concrete feels to me as if it came later. The concrete has another kind of resistance within it. The concrete um, was built to protect. And as I, as I touch the concrete, I am seeing this war, this um, resistance and, and and disturbance in the energy surrounding this place at that point. So the concrete is a massive um, a mass <laughs> for protection and for well the, the memories that it carries is this war war um, period. And the war is not like war as we know it now. I'm not seeing weapons or or stuff like that, uh, like uh, like guns. <laughs> so we are talking way, 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 way back, and even the people look different at that point. I read this thousands of years ago, thousands of years ago. And then there came silence after the war and it's not only here it, we are talking the whole planet the whole <sighs> shift um, everything start becoming up it, you can see it as the ice age as the stone age whatever you want to call it and then the new beginning so the new beginning for the third time basically nature recreated itself it did not remove the memories, it's just start creating life on top of the memories. So the outer layer of nature that we see here was a recreation, the reconstruction after that time. Not to cover up, but to keep living. And as we are not able of, remem of moving memory at that point, they just started new life upon it. The memory lies deep within the stone, the memory lies deep within every single <laughs> uh, mineral of which is hidden within this place. But it's, it's beautiful to feel and it's beautiful. I, I wish that these um, scientist people could measure the, the memories within stone, that they could somehow acknowledge the consciousness level of awareness that lies within these stones because they have so much beauty to share there's so much stories to tell um, but for now this is what these stones wanted to tell and as we are listening to them as we are giving them a voice they already start vibrating with less resistance they start shining up and and showing parts of their story and we understand their creation we understand for what reason that they were for what reason that they are and to be a knowledge for exactly that make them shift energy it's just like you and me if we are acknowledged for who we are what we do why we are here our energy shifts as well 
so this is it from here <laughs> talk with you guys so everything uh, was constructed together we are talking about what is the reason behind it and somebody say well it's the money lit somebody says well it's the water or it's the stones but the truth is it's everything combined into one as as you're looking at every other science project in the world in in order of creating electronity you need to have plus and uh, minus irons you know and it's exactly the same that we did with this material when we built the pyramids so the monolos was a part of it, the water lines is a big, big part of it because without water, no electricity can flow. Without water, consciousness will, will just stay stuck. It will not have the flow which is needed on in order of transforming and transmitting the energy <coughs> ley lines that lies upon the earth, lies upon our planet. So to, to judge that it's from one thing or another is kind of foolish because it's all combined together. They're talking about the energy still sending out strongly from the pyramid of the sun, which, which is true because that the vibrations inside of this pyramid are still vibrating. The water lines are still floating deep within um, this pyramid, that they're still lying monoliths activated inside of the pyramid. So even though that they are, are deactivated and, and disconnected from some of the uh, the rest of the grid. <laughs> They are still active inside of the pyramid, that is something that we are feeling. But of course, it's not the only thing activated in there. We also have the crystals and the minerals was a big part of it. And we have the chambers with different vibrations who also um, magnifies and sends, transmit energy through those center points. And there's stuff that feels alive in there. <laughs> Interesting. Well, guys, we will come back to this later. She's so, so busy. <laughs> <laughs> I am being practical. I am literally writing a full program. Full program of what? Full program on our retreats here in Viseko because our first retreat will already be in two months from now so I have to be practical genius for a while which is not my strongest side but look at me now ah! <laughs>